Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to verify an identity by using our half angle formulas. Now, particularly you know, when we're doing identities, you know, to verify identity, we want to show that the left side is equal to the right side. And particularly, we're always using you know, identities, Pythagorean, cofunction, even odd, and so forth. And we'd always look at the, you know, usually the side that had those most difficult, had a fraction or had operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying binomials, and so forth. Um, but however, whenever we see something change, like a double angle or a half angle, um, or the sum and difference uh, of two angles, then we want to look into applying those formulas to help rewrite um, one of the sides to further simplify it. So basically, you can see here is I have sine squared of uh, theta over 2 equals secant of theta minus 1 divided by 2 secant of theta. Now, usually, I would say, well, get rid of the fraction, right, so it can look like the other one. However, in this case, you know, theta divided by 2 is not always like, um, to, to rewrite it as the half angle formula with the square root could probably, or, um, could probably be a little bit more difficult. So even though it's definitely so impossible, I'm going to start on the left side in this case. However, you could definitely work on the right side. And remember, whatever side or wh wherever I explain it you know, for these problems is not necessarily always going to be the case. All right. So um, basically, if I am going to rewrite this here, I uh, have the sine of pi over 2. Now, again, that's squared. Now, I am going to write in um, at least the full formula, plus or minus. And that's going to be sine is going to be 1 minus cosine of theta over 2. But remember, that's squared. So that whole thing is squared. Okay, And that has to equal my right-hand side. Now, the first important thing is, um, so again, sine of theta over 2. If you don't have your half angle formulas, make sure you write that down. That's the half angle formula for sine, plus or minus the square root, 1 minus cosine theta 2. But it's sine squared, so I'm squaring that. Now remember, the square root and squaring are inverse operations. So when I go ahead and square this, those undo each other, and I'm left with 1 minus cosine of theta divided by 2. Now again, we want it to look like this on the right hand side. Now basically going to be the theme that I'm going to be doing for all these sides is remember, you can always multiply a fraction um, in the numerator or in the denominator and not change its value. And you know, I've gone over this a lot, but it's a big, uh, big misconception that a lot of students have that if I multiply by 3 over 3 on the top and the bottom, then I have 3 over 6. Well, 3 over 6 is equivalent to 1 half. They're the exact same. So as long as I'm multiplying the same number in the numerator or, or trigonometric function in the numerator and denominator, I am keeping the fractions equivalent. So we need to transform this so it looks like this. So I need to get a secant in the denominator. So the only way to do that is to multiply by secant of theta in the numerator and denominator. Now, make sure the numerator is a binomial. So you have to apply distributive property. So when I do that, I get secant of theta minus secant of theta times cosine of theta. Those are reciprocal functions of each other. So that's going to equal 1 over 2 secant of theta. And you can see that now I have verified my function. All right, going into the next one, I'm going to follow the exact same logic I did before, but now I'm going to use it for the cosine function. So I'll do plus or minus square root of 1 cosine is plus cosine of theta divided by 2. Again, that is squared. So therefore, those are inverse operations. So therefore, I'm left with 1 plus cosine of theta divided by 2. Well, now in this case, we need to get tangent. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. I'm going to multiply by tangent of theta. Apply an distributive property here. I have tangent of theta. Now this one I'm going to actually going to write out because it might not be as obvious to some of you. Remember, whenever we're having trouble, um, always write our signs in terms of cosines and sines. Therefore, now you can see that the cosines actually divide out. And now I'm left with tangent of theta plus sine of theta divided by 2 tangent of theta, which again is verified. All right, in the last example, um, we got to go back to remembering the half angle formula for tangent. And there's actually three representations of this, right? Now, typically, I always like to avoid the one with the square root. I, I, I did a problem like that, and then I realized I'm like, oh my god, there's two other ones that are easier um, to go ahead and use. So I always like to avoid um, that one. But you can definitely use that one as well. I think it would make, make this problem a little bit more difficult. So basically, I have tangent of pi divided by 2. Now, the 2 that I wrote down here, I could either, use, I could either replace tangent of 
theta divided by 2 as 1 minus cosine divided by sine. Or I could rewrite it as sine of u divided by 1 plus cosine. Well, since I'm trying to make it look like a fraction where the denominator is a binomial on the right-hand side, I'm going to replace tangent of pi divided by u with sine of theta divided by 1 plus cosine of theta. Just because having a binomial in the denominator, denominator just like the right side, I figure it's probably going to make this easier. Now, I need to get this to be secant. All right? so, what I kind of realize is if I multiply by secant on the top and the bottom, just like I've done for the rest of these problems, then I'll rewrite this in uh, terms of sines and cosines. That becomes secant is really 1 over cosine times sine of theta over 1 divided by secant of theta. You have to apply distributive property. Secant of theta times 1 is secant of theta. And then plus secant of theta is really Secant of theta times cosine of theta, those are reciprocal identities, reciprocal um, functions. So therefore, that equals 1. Well, here, that becomes sine over cosine, which is tangent. So really, I have tangent of theta divided by secant of theta plus 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just a couple examples on how to verify identities by using your half angle formulas. Thanks.